question should you ask a realtor when buying a house? Are there certain pieces of information you might want to know about before agreeing to work with a real estate agent? That's what we'll talk about next. Hi, I'm Kelly Vandiver. I'm a real estate agent in the Atlanta, Georgia area with Keller Williams, North Atlanta. What questions should you ask a realtor before buying a house? Well, that depends on what you want to know, but I think there are three questions you should ask a real estate agent before working with them. Number one, can I afford this kind of house in this area with this budget? What I mean by this is this kind of house, are you looking for a single family detached home, a condo or a town home? What kind of features are you looking for in the home? Number of bedrooms, number of bathrooms, number of garages, etc. When you say area, do you mean a specific school zone? Do you mean a specific city or county? Do you mean a specific zip code? Or is it about commute time? By this budget, do you mean the top end of your budget? Or do you mean a preferable area that you want to be in with regards to your loan payments? Is this the cash amount you want to spend? Or is this the amount that you've been approved for when getting the loan? One of the things I see with first-time home buyers in particular and people that haven't bought a home in a number of years is not necessarily understanding what they can get for the budget that they have. Especially in the Atlanta metro area, prices can vary greatly depending on what area you want to be in and how far you're willing to commute. I remember one client I worked with who wanted a detached home in a particular area near where she worked and she had a particular budget in mind. When I looked to see what homes were actively listed, given her criteria, there were no homes listed. Not only was there nothing active right then, I went back three years. Nothing had sold that met the description of the house that she wanted in that price range. Another client was concerned that they wouldn't be able to find a home with a master on the main that would fit within their budget. We took a weekend and looked at a few homes, and they were pleasantly surprised about what they could get for their budget. A good real estate agent will either know or be able to do the research to determine if the house that you want and the price range you want is available in that area. They'll also be able to give you good advice on other options to consider. They'll also take you out to see a few homes so you can get a better sense of what it is that your budget will buy for you in that area. It's a fair question to ask, can I get this kind of house in this area with this budget? Question number two, can you recommend a good lender? A good real estate agent will have a network of lenders that they trust, lenders that they know will work hard for their clients within their parameters about what they want and the budget they can afford. A lot of first time home buyers or people who haven't bought a home in several years think that their best bet is to go with a large financial institution. After all, they have a recognizable name, they have a good reputation, that's what they think makes the most sense. But it also seems that we have a lot harder time getting individualized service when we're working with a large organization. If you happen to have a family member or a friend who works for a large institution, then yes, you'll get that individualized attention. But often with large institutions, you don't get the personalized individual attention and the responsiveness that you'll get from a local lender. The other place that this could hurt you is when you actually go to put an offer in on a house. Smart real estate agents that are working with a home seller are going to call the lenders for the buyers that put in the offers. They want to find out more about the buyer and make sure that it looks like this is a good loan and it's going to go through. On the last home I sold, there are two lenders that never called me back. As it turned out, they weren't the top offers, but if they had been, they might have lost the offer just because their lender was not responsive. As it was, we had better offers and we had lenders that called me back. You can see why having a good real estate agent who can recommend great lenders is very valuable to you as you're going to buy a house. Question number three, what strategies do you recommend to help me get the winning offer on a house? In this highly competitive market, it's a really good idea to ask your real estate agent what their strategies are to help get their clients the winning offer. For instance, I often recommend that my clients look for a house that's not at the top of their budget, but rather that's listed a little below that so that if they need to go above the list price, they have the room in their budget to do that. Since so many homes go for over asking price, having the ability to go above the list price can help you have that winning offer. 
And it's not enough to have a good offer price. Your real estate agent also needs to have strategies for putting terms together that will be more appealing to the person selling the house. Terms that will help them want to accept your offer over other offers. Are you able to waive due diligence? Are you able to waive the financial contingency? Are you able to waive the appraisal contingency? Can you put some additional money if the house does not appraise? There are risks involved with these different terms. It's important that your real estate agent explains to you what those risks are so that you can decide what you can live with and what doesn't make sense for you. A good agent will also have advice for you should you not have the winning offer. They'll help you put together a backup offer and why that might be a good choice for you. And a good agent will also have other strategies. Another strategy I employ is to look for a house that's been on the market for a month or more. In this particular environment, if a house is not sold in a month, it is overpriced. The hard thing is that a lot of times the person selling the home doesn't really recognize why their house is not selling. It can be a delicate balancing act trying to help that person understand information and logic on why it's not selling and why it's overpriced because there's an emotional attachment that comes with the house. A good real estate agent will work hard to put an offer together that provides the information but also is sensitive to the needs of the seller and their emotions in trying to get a house like that. Another strategy I use is to look for homes that are off market. Yes, I know we're all getting phone calls and flyers in the mail bombarding us with asking us to sell our house, myself included. But a genuine individualized communication appealing directly to the person that owns the home might be just the ticket to find one of those houses off market. A good agent can help you get it under contract and persuade those home sellers to not put it on the market to sell it to you. I will tell you, it is a tough market out there. People still do buy homes, but it is tough to get a winning bid in this market. Your agent might employ all of these strategies and still have trouble getting you under contract on a house. But if they don't have these strategies to begin with, the chances of success go way down from there. So those are the three questions I would ask a realtor when buying a house. If you found this video helpful, you might also want to check out a recent video I did about the home buying process checklist. I'm Kelly Vandiver, hoping to help make your move easier. If you need some help buying or selling a house in the metro Atlanta area, reach out. Let's set up a time to talk.